Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are with Ernst Willem today, and we are continuing with the description on conjunctions of Saturn. We have discussed Sun, Moon, Mars, and Mercury, and now over to you. <laughs> okay, so let's let's start with Jupiter, which is the next planet in line, so people know where to find things based on the normal order. So there's a great little book. It's called Bhavatna Ratnakara, and this is a book that's all about Vimshatri and it has many, many principles of Vimshatri you find nowhere else that work better than anything else. If you can't use Vimshatri Dasha well without this book, okay? So get Pavratna Ratnakara. Now one principle he says is if Jupiter and Saturn conjunct, Jupiter Dasha is mediocre and Saturn's Dasha is great, okay? Because what's happening here is Saturn is starving Jupiter as always but Jupiter is delighting Saturn. So lots of times with this conjunction, you'll see people who are in their Jupiter Dasha and their life, they're struggling. They're like, oh my God, and now Saturn Dasha is coming, it'll be worse. And you just say, oh no, don't worry. Saturn Dasha is finally where things will work out and they won't believe you, but it always works out, okay? So that's one secret of Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Now, as far as, that's the good part. Jupiter does help Saturn and so, People with Jupiter, Saturn, the Jupiter helping Saturn part makes them be able to get out from under problems eventually in a big way, in a full way, okay? On the other hand, Saturn's starving Jupiter. And so Jupiter is the planet of being, having the wisdom, the insight, the intuition to see our purpose in life, okay? So for instance, say, you're madly in love with somebody, okay? And then that person marries somebody else. And you go, oh my God, I, my life sucks, okay? That's one attitude. That's a Saturn-Jupiter attitude. Another attitude is, oh wow, I understand that if I had married that person, my life would not go where it's supposed to go. That's a Jupiter attitude. That's the wisdom of seeing how the things we don't get in life, we don't get because they would take us away from our greater purpose. So we have a greater purpose and that's Jupiter. And the things that the important, there's big things in our life and there's the small things, but talking about the big things, the big things in life are the things that draw us towards our greater purpose, which is the place in this world where we can grow and learn and you know, grow into a more wise spiritual person the most rapidly. And so there's a wisdom and intuition to knowing when we get something, and especially when we don't get something, how that is supporting our, our quest on this planet to grow. When there's a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, a person gets starved in knowing what there's, what's right for them, what is good, because Jupiter is what's good, what's good is to grow, but it gets confusing on what's gonna make me grow. So when they lose something, it can be hard to understand how that loss is necessary and helpful for them in the long run. Um, and when they have something, it's hard for them to feel like this is really what I'm meant to do. And the biggest area of pain they have is when something good is in their life of not feeling like, wow, this is really what I'm meant to do. Um, they'll instead feel like this isn't big enough. I need, a, I need something that really makes, me, makes it worth living on life. You know, Jupiter's name is Jiva, which simply means life, to live. And um, that's one in Jupiter's name. Of course, he's also called Guru, right? So, um, you know, we, we're on this earth to live. We have a purpose here. And the Saturn-Jupiter person is starved with respect to that purpose. They're not digesting and getting filled by that sense of purpose. And so... Um, when what, two things will happen. One thing is they'll get into something and they'll get super excited about it. And once they get super excited, they'll think, oh, this is what I was born for. This is what's most important. And they'll want to tell everybody. They'll want everyone else to get into it. They'll just get over into it, okay? And then after a few months, they'll realize, wait a minute, someone's already done this before. Someone's been doing this 10 years longer than me. I'll never be able to catch up oh, wow, this isn't the ultimate thing for me to be living for. And then they'll get disappointed and they won't want to do anything. So they can get to these cycles of super excited to super depleted about things, about the same thing. 
because they need to learn that the, their purpose is to grow. The purpose of being on earth is to grow in wisdom. There is no other purpose to it. And when they embrace that idea that the experiences that come, the experiences they don't get, that all those are here to serve their personal growth, to help them gain wisdom and self-knowledge and grow in self-realization, then finally everything takes meaning in their lives. But they don't experience that in the Jupiter Dasha usually. In the Jupiter Dasha, they usually feel like they're not what they're meant to do. They're not achieving their purpose. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. They get excited about something that ends up making them feel lackluster in a short time. And during that period, they're struggling to learn that the purpose is to grow and that everything that comes into our life gives an opportunity to grow in wisdom. And once they embrace that self-realization is the goal, then life, everything in life becomes very meaningful. But until then, they struggle with just finding a sense of meaning and purpose with life. Okay. And so they lack this excitement or they are overexcited, usually one of those two extremes. But it's a pretty simple conjunction. Eventually, these people all, unless there's other afflictions to Jupiter, like if Jupiter is afflicted by its enemies, which are Mercury and Venus, then the person will be stuck trying to find purpose in a material world. It's not worth being born on Earth for anything in this world. While there's things are enjoying world, none of those will satisfy us enough to make it worth being actually born here, okay? But if, um, if we understand that the growth is worth it, the, the, how we grow and the things, the excitement we learn about ourselves, that that's what makes it worth it. Um, as we become a better, more insightful, wise person, that makes it all worth it. If they learn that, they do really well. And they usually learn it. But if Mercury, Venus aspect Jupiter, there's less of a chance for the person to learn that because they, they're, they're, they're focused more on purpose in the world as far as a concrete, real, existing thing. But sadly, the world is not real. It's not as concrete as we like to think. So we can't fulfill our purpose with worldly things. The worldly things are just tools that you know, God uses to fulfill the purpose of life, which is to grow in wisdom. So once the Jupiter Saturn person conjunct person learns that, then they make a lot of very rapid growth because that's what they want. They just want to find their purpose. And so it does tend to favor spiritual development, the Jupiter Saturn conjunction, unless Jupiter ends up being starved by Venus or Mercury. And it's so much better if sun or moon aspect Jupiter um, or Mars be, or with Jupiter even, because those are his friends and they make Jupiter a wiser um, planet, a planet that acts based on wisdom, not world. So that's about, the, I'd say, the highlights of the Jupiter conjunction. Oh, here's the other thing. Of course, there can be delays in children. There could be delays in finding the right guru. Until the person has a deep feeling about what the purpose of life is, then, of course, it'll delay them finding the right guru. So they might find gurus that don't really work out for them early in life. You know, they say, the, you know, the teacher comes when the student's ready. It just takes the Jupiter-Saturn person longer to be ready to really grow spiritually because they are looking at first for purpose in this world. But once they understand the purpose is, is in how the world makes them grow, then they're very ready for a guru and then they make a lot of spiritual progress. Okay. Yeah, and uh, this uh, I've also seen, as you said, that there's delay in having children. Yeah. I've also seen that uh, they get too much obsessed with this. <laughs> when will I have children? And they're yeah. like, or oh, if that is not there, there's nothing in my life. So they make that mm -hmm. that bigger purpose, like they try to fulfill it by having children sometimes. Yeah, very, very true. Yeah, I agree fully. Yes. And uh, one more thing I want to ask you here is like you said regarding spirituality. So like, mm -hmm. have you seen that if this is in some particular signs or some houses that this can be either better or degrade? Or it's difficult. in signs of Moon, Mars, or Jupiter, the signs of, of, of the friends of Jupiter, in the signs of the friends of Jupiter. Okay, you are saying then spirituality will be better with these signs. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, better there. More difficult in the signs of Mercury and Venus. Because Jupiter gets very worldly in the signs of Mercury and Venus. Yes, yes, yes. And at times I have seen with this conjunction that they they like to stay in secluded places and for their spiritual practices. They don't like gatherings like in India we have this Kumbh Mela, which is like so many people yeah. out there. They I've, 
I've noticed both. It's, a lot of that, I think, depends on the house that the Jupiter Saturn's falling in. Okay, um, okay. One person that comes to mind has it in the 11th, and they love getting together with other people, but, like you, but, they, but they are very capable of being alone. But then they do enjoy when they get a chance with people, but they don't make it the big thing. Um, they're, but yeah, they're definitely very good at working alone, for sure. Okay, okay. Nice, fantastic. So now to Saturn and Venus. <laughs> okay, Saturn and Venus um, is, is difficult because Venus is really such an important planet. It's the brightest planet there is. It's a planet of rejuvenation 